Now, you know what? Uh, man Bone, I love him, the man, I love that, that my brother, right? When we first met, he didn't like me. He tried to he tried to get me like three different times. He, you know what I'm saying? Because I was the last, you know, he tested, you know, you can test it, right? And he had tested me. And I got I, I barked so so goddamn loudly, because he was he was in the gym, you know what I'm saying? And he, it was, the, the door was locked. So I talk shit, he talks some shit, and I talk some shit, I'm, you know what I'm saying? When I get you a little motherfucker, I'll beat the shit out of you. I'm like, yeah, okay, well, hey, whatever, nigga, I'm stab your big ass, something like that, right? <laughs> so uh, every time he uh, catch me, I throw my little dukes up, because man, I'm on the way, he about like six, three, yeah. something like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's a big guy. He ain't got squabbles, you know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, so, and he was in there for killing motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, damn. So every time he came up, you know, I threw my little dukes up, and something would always intervene from him actually, you know what I'm saying? We actually put, it, put his hand out and reach me. And, and the person that, that finally settled it, once again, was Gator. You know? From Bounty Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> he, he didn't want to intervene, because Madbone, he, he was in the gym, and he was trying to talk me to come in the back by these, uh, where they keep the football equipment. Like, yeah, bring your little badass back. I bet you won't come back here, you know what I'm saying? And Mumbles and them was uh, from Broadway. They were looking, like, looking at me like, nigga, what you gonna do? You know what I'm saying? So I was going, I'm going back there. And here come Gator out of nowhere. Hey, oh no, nigga, hey, oh no, nigga, oh no. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't know Gator and Madbone had a bond. You know what I'm saying? Because it was like this. And it's like that to me to this day, right? You got to respect your soldiers. You know what I'm saying? You got to respect other dudes that, you see, because what they call gangs or whatever like that, you know, they're still like just smaller militaries. You know what I'm saying? I served my country. My allergy in my country is what? Playboy gangsters. You know what I'm saying? So when I met like like Bandit uh, from 60s, I couldn't do nothing but respect him. He respected me. Where we at? We're on a corny, what they call C Street. C Street. Yeah, this is where it all began. We're between Cadillac and Guthrie. But uh, I want to show you exactly where they say they solidified it back at. In this alley is where, from my history, from what I've been told, like I tell you, I'm not a founder. I'm part of the establishment. Some might say it's better known as the Bitnose Gang or the CD Gang. <laughs> but right back here, yeah, this is where, uh, you know, Big Jesse, you know, called uh, Big Pirate and, uh, you know, Master D and Drew, from what I was told, you know what I'm saying, and uh, Chuko and Boo Boo and Red and Big, um, Big Poker and to, uh, one punch, Kenny Raymond. And they, uh, Jesse said, you know, he was tired of uh, all this, you know, fighting or dancing, or dancing and fighting, you know? And we already doing our thugging, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, folks, folks, white folks ain't wasn't safe, you know what I'm saying? We gonna get our bread, they robbing, whatever they doing, hitting licks. So, uh, you know, and they, we, we, uh, they had already had a fight with a couple of different organizations, you might call it street gangs. They said, okay, you know, it's gonna be Playboy Gangster Crips. We gonna put, take the pot like gangster, Put the Black Boy Dancers and put it together, you know? And that's when it started, in 1979. It all started right here in back of this alley. You were Little Spider when you first came around here? Yeah. And that was Little Spider from one? No, no, when I, came, when I came to C Street, I was already Spider, right? And then Pirate put the loc on it. Now, did, did they know that you had this little connection to the 107 Hoovers as a youngster? Yeah. Yeah, because they had already... Like I said, they had a little skirmish, but then they already grew to be tight. You know what I'm saying? So like Lil Mac and Ratnag and all them big cousins and all them, they was already coming over here. Oh, okay. So they was already got, they had already had a bond. Okay. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was a pretty easy transition because, well, the reason I really left from over because uh, Big Boo uh, had, I left my radio with him and he sold my radio, man. And I came back that to get my radio and he had sold it. I, I didn't wasn't too happy with that. So he was like, you know, little nigga, what you want to do? You want to fight? And I was like, yeah, you know? So he took me over there to uh, the Bud Long Elementary School. They had these seven steps. A lot of dudes got on 7107 that way. And uh, it was like a little pit. You know what I'm saying? Steps go down. It was really a janitor's office or something, right? And, you know, he, he got down. He said, bring your little badass down here. You think it? So he thought I was going to cheese up the whole round. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm riding on the bike going up to the school on, on Sunny Handlebars, Big Sunny. I was on the Handlebars. So I get down there, I get to fighting. 
And he was, man, he bloodied me from head to toe, but I would not cry, I would not give up, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to the end, right? And that's what he wanted me to be, little boo, right? But I was thinking, nah, you know what I'm saying, I'm a little spider. I'm thinking in my head, right, that big spider's gonna whoop your ass, right? Because his name was Eric also, and he stayed around the corner. My godparents in there, he stayed on 106th in Hoover, he stayed on 107th in Hoover, right? So when this was over, and I called him and told him, we told, told him about it, right? And I called him first, and then I went and seen him, and what I, what I would say today would have been like, you call him a Buster Rube, you know what I'm saying? Because he had no, because if I'm, your, if I'm your big homie, right, you my little homie, and one of the homies take something from you or sell it off to you, right, and then you stand up for yourself and fight it, I need to take that fade too. He got to beat both our asses then, right? It was no, t he damn near said, well, damn, you know, you shouldn't have left him with, you shouldn't have left him with the radio. That was his, that was his thing. And then next thing you know, he, he left, and he went and joined a, a turf in Compton, I never seen him again. So that's why I was always, you know, I was going through the transition of living over there. I was confused then. I was like hurt, confused, you know, traumatized down there. I had my G homie. No, nah, man, you know what I'm saying? But then he didn't have the same, we didn't have the same bond of connection like me and Chucky had, or me and Coco had, you know? You know, and that's why Boo wanted me to be little Boo, you know what I'm saying? Because he was like, he, he, was, he knew that Spider wasn't going to do nothing. He said it, but I didn't want him to believe it. You know what I'm saying? But I, I had to see it for myself. That's some good times over there. And I idolized Big Jap. Big Jap was the first dude I seen that could fight, that, that you know, was, was cool in the motherfucker, could dress, you know, had the jewelry, whatever, whatever. He had the girls, and he was a solid dude. And then, you know, he got killed mysteriously. And that was another thing that started weighing on me. You know, then, then uh, yeah, people like, like Mumu got killed. You know, a lot of people got known leaders, known generals, this thing, you're dying off. I was like, damn, man, it's, what's the hell going on here, you know? So all that was happening in turn when the episode took place, but it really made me became a Playboy gangster. All right, this is what we call the Booger Wolf Mansion back in the days. And why was that? Because for some odd reason, when the, when the girls that were getting Section 8 from like the, the east side or whatever like that, Wise County or whatever like that, then when they were moving over here, every last one of their ass was ugly in a motherfucker. So we get to call them the Booger Wolf Mansion. But it also became like a, a stronghold, a fortress for us. Because if you look at it the way it is, you know what I'm saying? So we could have, we had homies from right here, there's a big ass corridor back in there. So we could have, man, you did your, your, your dealing back there, then you had your arsenal. We had, so I took, I took ugly girls, don't get me wrong now. Each one of us would get one of them, you know what I'm saying? That was, that was on the block. The, 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 what, what, what is known as the front line G's, with, with one of the worst wars that we've ever had, you know what I'm saying, with the, with the world of the 60s. Most of us would get one of these girls so we could be on one of these balconies, so we could be on the lookout. You know what I'm saying? Because they wasn't playing. Six do this. They be doing what you call crip checking. They'll go in a certain area and they check your cripping. And if it ain't stand up in the park, then they gonna turn you, then you got to, you know what I'm saying? You got to join into the neighborhood car and they're gonna show you how it's done. And that's how a lot of neighborhood sets, you know what I'm saying, that, that became neighborhood, came up under the neighborhood banner. Now, it's, but it's a different spirit for some reason with the gangster crib car that don't behave like that. You know, that, that, I mean, I'm not saying it's good, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's never been the spirit. The A trades are not known for going out, you know what I'm saying, trying to turn somebody else into an A trade or whatever. The, uh, the Broadways are not known for that. The Avalons ain't known for that. You know what I'm saying? The West LA gangsters ain't known for that. And then you got, now you got other gangster, gangster crib neighborhoods, but those main four I just said, them the, more, the ones that always mostly have say so. Uh, in, in, on any prison yard, or has any kind of voice in these streets of Los Angeles, in the whole LA County, them the only ones really people really give a he ear to, you know. Trey Five Seven's out of Pomona, you know what I'm saying? That you really give a ear. You know, hey, that's the homie. Okay, well listen to what he's saying, you know. What are uh, some final thoughts before we leave C Street? Well, that uh, I want to be a part of my legacy, to when you know to be known that I had something to do with helping this come from the street to the corporate high rise. You know, because we pushing something positive today. We, we ain't even looking at other rivals or stuff like that. We're looking past that. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Feel free to comment below so you can give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related episodes to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description. And thanks for watching StreetTV.net.